All right, picking up on problem 15 from AP Statistics 2017 practice exam. We have a box that contains 10 tags. They're numbered one through 10, and they have a different number on each tag. So like, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Second box contains eight tags, numbered 20 through 27 with a different number on each of those tags. So one tag is, is drawn at random from each box. What's the expected value of the sum of the numbers on the two selected tags. Okay, so you're essentially gonna find the, the means, but remember these are random variables, so it's gonna be like a weighted mean. So um, if you remember this formula, the E sub X is the whole sum of the, or the expected value of X, you know, the sum of the probability of, the x of i term times the x of i term, something like that. And remember, you have a formula sheet um, in case you can't, you know, do it or if you forget it off the top of your head. Um, so yeah, don't freak out about that. So it's right over here. Or it's right over here. And I kind of wrote that wrong, actually. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, so in this case, we have these 10 tags so let's find the average value or the expected value for each box then combine that because then i'll give you the total um expected value for adding those two boxes so the the first box has 10 tags and that means then it has a pro each tag has a probability of one tenth being selected and the value on each tag is one, two, three, four, five, all through 10. So you're going to basically add these numbers together and multiply by one tenth. These numbers add together is 55, one tenth is 55, you'll get 5.5. This will be the expected value for the first box. Now for the second box, you have eight tags, so each is going to have a probability of being selected of one eighth. And you have numbers 20 through 27, 21, 22, 23, all the way to 27. So you're going to multiply the sum of these numbers by one eighth. And you'll get 23.5. Then, so the ex expected value of the sum of the numbers of these two tags, we'll just be adding those together. 23 plus 23.5 plus 5.5 gives you 29. And so the answer is E. All right, 16, the pollster is interested in comparing the proportions of women and men in a particular town who are in favor of a ban on fireworks in town borders. The pollster, it's a funny name, um, plans to test the hypothesis that the proportion of women in favor of the ban is different from the proportion of men in favor of the ban. There are 46, there's 4,673 women and 4,502 men who live in the town. From a simple random sample of 40 women in the town, so sample size of 40 women. The pollster finds that 38 favor the ban. So let's start for the women. P hat W is 38 out of 40. Um, for the men, they have 50 men that they select in the sample and 27 of them are in favor of the ban. So the portion of men, and the sample that are in favor of the ban is 27 out of 50. So which of the following statements is true about this situation? Because it samples are normal populations, a two proportion Z test would be valid. Nope, it's not true because um, we're not gonna use that. <laughs> um, and we're, yeah, it has, it has, lot, has more, new, has, there's more conditions, there's more to do with that. But when you use a two proportion Z test, it depends, you know, on how the sample is collected and what you're trying to figure out, that sort of thing. Um, so it's not A, 
B, because the size of each sample is greater than 30, a two proportion snow. No, this is, this is way wrong because this is a central limit theorem when you're talking about means. So that's not gonna be it either. C, because the number who favored the band is greater than 10 in both groups, a two proportion Z test will be valid. The number of proportion if you're the band. What are they trying? Okay, they're can, so partly true, but this is kind of this kind of gets at the um, this kind of gets at the point. Like what what's what's going on? What's wrong here is that we have if you remember the number of successes and failures. Um, they both have to be um ten. Um, we have successes for women is thirty eight. But for the failures is two. Um, so a two proportion a test, we wouldn't even be able to do a test. So I'm just gonna tell you that that's that, that easy answer. But um I wanted you I wanted to read it to see because this is what you, this is I would guess is the one I would get students because um um this is true and it's kind of true, but um they have to, you have to mention the other part. I don't think they usually have this thing on your explicitly on your um, formula sheet. I always remember successes and failures. Um, and, and, you know, you could use a formula, you know, P hat, um, N times P hat is greater than or equal to 10. And N times one minus P hat is greater than or equal to 10. You maybe you'll see it like that in your, in like your course or notes, but this is just the, these are just the number of people who voted versus the number of people who didn't vote, who voted against it. So that's why you say success, successes and failures. So there you go. All right, 17, employees at a large company can earn monthly bonuses. Cool. Distribution of monthly, of monthly bonuses earned by all employees last year has mean 2.3 and standard deviation 1.3. Um, um, they send thousands of dollars. I don't know what I mean. Um, okay, well, let's see represent the standard number of distribution. If X bar represents the mean number of months, oh, oh, number of monthly bonuses. Okay. Um, earned last year for a random sample of 40 employees, which of the following calculations will give it, give the approximate probability that, that X bar is less than two. Okay. Um, this is actually not, difficult and pretty simple it just may be overwhelming um but you're just you're just looking for like the proportion you're just trying to you're just trying to you just go about it as if you're trying to calculate like what's the probability right what's the probability that x bar is less than two um so remember like you, you know maybe you, at this point you do it through your calculator but um you know, back in the begin in the old days when we first started this stuff, um, we had you know like the on top we had the remember the z score the z score is equal to the x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So let me see if they I'll write it though. But yeah, it's going to be written like this: the statistic line is a parameter over the standard error of the statistic. Um. You know, that may be what it looks like originally. So we're essentially trying to just find, you know, just go, is you're, we're just trying to find the probability that X bar is less than or equal to two. The two goes here. The, the mean is 2.3, right? The standard deviation, what do you got? 1.3. But down here, you have to, you know, divide. Since it's, since it's um, it's a sampling distribution. It's not the entire population, which is never, really, it never really will be. We use the formula, and and um, yes, they usually will have it on here. So Okay, not have, okay, not have it on here. Oh, yeah, well, no, yeah, I overlooked it. Yeah, that's over here. Um, 
but in any case, like, um, I don't think that's, I don't think that's going to be the confusing part. Just another way you could do is you could actually calculate it. But anyways, the answer would be a X, the, the mean standard deviation. Okay. So not really much work on there. All right. Right, 18, this is, okay, cool. This is a fun one. Okay, the p-value for one-sided t-test is 0.1. Oh, never mind. this is pretty simple. Um, if, they, the, if the test has been two-sided, what would the p-value have been? Okay, so one side, you know, if we're talking about one-sided, we you know we're looking at this probability or this area, you can think of it like that. Uh, that's being 0.1, right? If it's gonna be two-sided, then we're also going to look at this side, the other point one. We're looking at how, like, whether you remember if it falls, you know, extreme to the left or extreme to the right, whatever values, whatever you're talking about. Um, so we, it's just going to be double that. You have 20% chance, or 0.2 is your p value. So the answer is B. 19 a scatter plot of Student heights and in inches versus a corresponding arm length is shown below. One of the points in the graph is labeled A. So, okay, so if, if point A, go around in red, if point A is removed, which of the following statements would be true? That rhymes kind of. Um, so just think of it as like if it's a physical weight, like, like the line. You know, if this was in here, the line should, would go like this, right? It would probably go something like something like that. But then, since this is there, it's gonna probably gonna drag. It's gonna like drag the line down. The line will maybe look something like this. So you take away the point, the line becomes more steep. The slope increases, and the intercept decreases. So let's see if that's what they're gonna look for. So. Slope. Nope, no, it's never going to change. Nope, it's going to change. It increases. Let's see. And the core. Oh yeah, the correlation coefficient increases. Um. Yes. Remember the correlation coefficient. This R guy. R can be between one and negative one. This tells you basically the strength of a linear relationship. Um. So, since this point it will be gone, the the least squares regression line will follow more closely to this point. It's gonna have a, it's gonna have more strength. So, answer will be C. Twenty. Let x be a random variable whose values are the number of dots that appear on the up uppermost face when a fair that is rolled. Possible values of x are one, two, three, four, five, and six. The mean of x is seven halves, and the variance of x is 35 over 12. Let y be the random variable whose value is the difference, first minus second, between the number of dots that appear on the uppermost face for the first half, for the first and second roll. No, for the first and second rolls, that, the, that of a fair die that is rolled twice. What is the standard deviation of y? Oh, all that for. <laughs> Okay, so I guess they're just testing if you know this thing about the variance and standard, standard deviation. <clears throat> so a little bit of review. Remember the standard deviation, let's say standard deviation of X is equal to um, the square root of the variance. So the variance of the variance is the standard deviation just squared. So maybe the, so the variance is, you know, is it looks like is a standard deviation squared. It's gonna usually look like this. So then it's asking for if the die is rolled twice, then what do you do with the standard deviation and or what do you do with in this case with the variance? So when you're talking about um standard deviations or you know when you're applying, I guess uh when you're combining you know random variables, this is usually in the random variable chapter, um the the variance is add. 
the variance is add. So then you would add 35 over 12 and 35 over 12. Now, it's not asking for variance though. It's asking for standard deviation. So this is the variance for, for you know for the two roles. But um what's the variance? I mean, I mean sorry, what's the standard deviation? The standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So the standard deviation is then just gonna be the square root of 35 over 12 plus 35 over 12. So it's gonna be C. Oh man, I think maybe they're also testing your algebra skills. Maybe, maybe they want to see. Don't 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 go with this. It's just that, that it, you can't break it up like that. So just just go with that. I mean, because that's the only, that's the only correct one. All right, um, I'm gonna take a break for a minute because I gotta get some more water. Um, so I'm gonna um do the next part in the next video. But again, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I know sometimes I may mumble and jumble and not you know, go over things clearly, but you got to give me some feedback. Let me know because I'm just talking to myself essentially right now, but, um, all right. I'll see you guys in the next video.